I've got one more topic here about object-oriented programming in ES6 with classes, and that is what is polymorphism? And what does polymorphism mean, and how is it applied in JavaScript? So just to review, the core idea of object-oriented programming, creating a blueprint, a template as a class that makes, that encapsulates a whole bunch of data and functionality together, that is the idea of encapsulation. It's a little package of an object with data and functionality. Inheritance is the idea of once I've made a class and I want a class to inherit a lot of properties or functions but modified with its own custom stuff, that's the idea of inheritance. And inheritance is a thing that happens in a tree because you can have something inherit something which inherits something else. And actually, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a little bonus. I want to just show one little trick uh, about inheritance that might be kind of interesting. Now, what is polymorphism? So polymorphism, if we look at the word itself, poly meaning many, and morphism, morph for like form, means we can treat an element, an object that has a particular type, like a confetti object, as either a confetti object or a particle object, depending on what's convenient for us. And yet, somehow, the system, the compiler, the interpreter, the executor of the code is going to know what to do correctly. And so if I were in a strongly typed language, which JavaScript is not, what strongly typed, I mean you have to declare the type of a thing before you make a variable. One moment, please. Uh, so during this video, I referred to Java as a strongly typed language. And all the places I looked on the internet mo do describe Java as a strongly typed language. However, the aspect that I was explaining is really something known as explicit typing, meaning you have to say, if you're going to declare a variable, a variable p, I have to say what kind of data I'm putting in there. Is it an integer? Is it a float? Is it a particle? What strongly typed means is that that type could never change. It has to remain the same, and the, there's really like a lot of stricter rules around how that works. So like Python, for example, is also strongly typed, but you don't have to declare what, it's not explicit. You don't have to say what kind of type that variable is. You just can't change it later. You've got to be, it's got to work all when it's compiled. So there's a lot of nuance to that and some very, I'll try to include some reading material in this video's description to explain that better. But what I really meant was explicit typing, okay? Now back to the video. I would have to say something, I could say, normally I would say like confetti C equals a new confetti object. This is the way in a strongly typed language I would declare a variable C, I would give it a type, it's confetti, and I'd call the confetti constructor to make that object. In a strongly typed language, I could also say particle P or particle C, whatever it is, equals new confetti. And this would be allowed because confetti extends particle. So in that case, I could consider this variable to be of different forms. I can consider it to be a particle when it's convenient or a confetti object when it's convenient. But the compiler will always know to execute and use the properties and functions of the confetti class. And this is especially convenient when you want to put a lot of stuff into an array in a strongly typed language because you don't want to keep track of which type which things are. We can basically do the same idea in JavaScript. It will just look less Fantastic, because JavaScript is so flexible anyway about types. But this is the core idea. So let's actually go and do this. Let's, over here, let's change. This is code from my previous video about inheritance. Let's change this to an array. And I'm going to make an array called particles. And I'm going to put a little for loop to just add 10 particles in setup. Then. I'm going to say, just to get started, I'm going to say particles index i is a new particle. And I'll just put them all in the center, whatever. And then now I can say for let p of particles. And I can say, and this is an, a for of loop, which lets me go through every particle. I could use a for each loop. I know a lot of people prefer those. Um, but uh, let p of update and show. So now I should see if I refresh this. I should see, here we go, I've got 10 particles moving around. Now, what if what I wanted to do was say, if random 1 is less than 0.5. So I basically want to give a 50% chance of either putting a particle object 
or a confetti object. The magic of all of this is that I don't have to change this code down here. I just fill this same array with a bunch of different objects. As long as they're kind of linked through this idea of inheritance, they all have an update function, they all have a show function, polymorphism says this variable p is going to know for each one, it's going to know whether it's a confetti or a particle object, and it's going to execute the right version of the function. So we should now see we have a bunch of particles and a bunch of confetti. And every time I refresh this, there's a different random amount. Um, so that's polymorphism. Wow, I made a kind of a short video. So I promised a little extra tidbit here at the end of this video. So one of the things that's really interesting about inheritance and that inheritance tree is that inheritance is not just the thing that's useful because you can, oh, you designed your own particle class and now you're designing your own confetti class that extends particle. Maybe somebody else designed something and you want to inherit everything from that. For example, there is a thing in P5 called P5 vector. I've used it in a lot of coding challenges and videos. P5 vector object is a vector object. It has an x, a y, and a z component and has a lot of functionality for vector math. So what I actually could do here is I could say, look at this, I could say class particle extends p5.vector. So in that case, now I'm just going to say super xy. Like I don't need to, this is now an object that's going to get x and y from the parent class, but I don't actually, uh, I can now start to use other stuff. So for example, my particle might also have a velocity, which is, uh, I, I want to make it random. So I'm actually going to use the uh, P5 vector from, from angle, no, no, random 2D function. So it could have a random velocity, and then I could say, oh, this is so crazy, but this dot add, this dot velocity, because there's an add function, and I want to add the velocity to this object because it is a P5 vector, ah! and then I could just draw it at this at x and y. Let's see if this works. Amazingly, this works. So this might, uh, you know, this is very, the behavior is very different because it's not a different random velocity, it's just a random direction. But you can see this is very po powerful. Particle extended P5 vector, I suddenly got access to all of the vector math that's in P5 vector. And then confetti extends particle, so it's also a vector. And let's just look, I think it would be useful for me to very briefly, before I go, <laughs> just go over to the console and do something like let uh, p equal a new particle. Let's just look at this. Look at this. Uh, I want to take a look at this. You can see that this is now, uh, it, this particle object has an x, y, and z, and this, this is actually how it works underneath the hood. You can see here that it's prototype, where it inherits everything from, is from this particular object. And if I looked at a confetti object, this has to do with the prototype stuff. This is what ES6 classes completely hides from you. Um, and if I look at this object now, we can see, look, it has the brightness in R, it has this velocity, it has an X, Y, Z. It's prototype, what it inherits from is particle, and that prototype is vector. So you can actually see, this is generally a place you kind of don't want to look because it's like super confusing, but you can see the inheritance chain, the prototype chain or the inheritance tree here. Confetti extends particle, which extends vector. And this s dot vector is like a weird notation because of the way the P5 library works. All right, so that was a little extra trick. You can think about that. Maybe that would confuse you. That's okay. It kind of confused me while I was explaining it. Hopefully, you got a sense of inheritance and polymorphism as features of, of as, as aspects of object-oriented programming that you can apply in JavaScript using ES6 JavaScript. Thanks very much, and I'll see you later.